This program is brought to you by LegendarySTrength.com. The content found here is for informational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice. It is recommended you talk to your qualified health professional before making any changes to your exercise plan, diet, or prescription medication use. Legendary Strength is not responsible for any claims made during this program. Hey, Logan Christopher here, and welcome to my third ever podcast. This one should be really fun. And before we dive into the material, a little bit of backstory about what we're actually going to be talking about. Well, I've been on the road quite a bit lately, uh, three weekends in a row, about to hit my third one up. Uh, Earlier this month, I was going to attend the energy medicine certification. That's not what I'm going to be talking about today. Very interesting topic. Definitely something I will be covering more in the future. Uh, Just suffice to say that going deeper into energies, this is stuff that most people don't know about. Some people don't even believe in, yet I've seen so much evidence of what not only of it existing, but really what it can do for people. So once again, huge, big topic. Also something I'm going toward uh, learning next weekend. Uh, But what I just returned from this past weekend was the Longevity Now Conference that's held in Costa Mesa, California. The Longevity Now Conference is put on by Len Foley, Rebecca Gothier. It's, uh, It's sort of David Wolf's premier event where they bring in a whole bunch of speakers, wide variety of health, nutrition, superfoods, all sorts of really great information. Uh, obviously, I really like it because I think they this was the 10th event, and I think I've been to seven or eight of them myself. So obviously, I really enjoy it and I get a lot out of it, or else I wouldn't be going to every single one of them as much as I possibly can. And of course, I plan on continuing doing this in the future. Usually, they have, have two events a year. This year, because a uh, baby's being born by the main woman that puts it on, they're only going to be having one this year, which it just had. But if you want to get more information, want to look at doing this next year, I highly recommend you do. Also, of course, let me know if you're going because I'd love to meet you there. It's at thelongevitynowconference.com. So what I plan to do for you here in the podcast today is, well, I have something like 20 pages of notes and that's writing quite small mind mapping each of the different speakers in there I could go over all that but I thought what would actually be more interesting was to go over my action list Uh, so this is something I do with all the events I go to and I go to a lot of events because I love learning I'm always looking to learn more to get better of an edge for myself but also to then learn this stuff that I can then share with people like you listening to this so after going to an event what I like to do is then go through all my notes once again and pull out action steps pull out items that I can immediately put into action that I can immediately start doing so that it's not just knowledge that stays in the brain but it is instead something that you can implement to affect your life I mean that's the real goal with any event is to actually take action on it so you get better results actually one of the speakers there uh, the Reverend uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith was talking about that unused knowledge is like constipation of the spirit. I really like that analogy. So what I do with events, and especially this one here, is after going through the whole event, I go back through my notes and pull out an entire action list. I thought I would go through at least some of this here, depending on how long it takes, but some of it giving you the details and why I'm going to start doing these different things. Some of them are very specific, some are more broad, some are things a little more for the future, some are things I can do immediately. But we'll talk about each one of them as we go along there. The first one is to eat more raw food. Now, this is one I've definitely done a lot of in the past. I still do probably more than most people do. Uh, Yet, even with myself, I think I've gotten away from really... uh, A lot of people agree that somewhere in the range of 50 to 80% of your diet as raw food is a good marker to shoot for. Uh, The whole 100% raw food is thing is probably not the best for a a large part of people. Uh, So... Not necessarily going for that, but really having more raw 
food in your diet. And what's that mean? Primarily, that's more vegetables, more fruit. You can do raw nuts and seeds, seaweeds, uh, and of course, many of the different superfoods. So I'm going to be focusing on just really trying to up this. Uh, one of the other ones was get back to eating a salad daily. Something I really recommend for most people, something that for a long time I've been doing, but really in the recent weeks and months actually I'd gotten away from really doing it every single day so it's something I'm trying to get back to not just trying I'm gonna actually and have been doing it since going through this event but something I'm for sure absolutely gonna be doing you know if you miss one day not a big deal but really it should be something that's pretty much automatic and where you get to the point where if you don't have your salad you feel a little bit off so eating more raw food having a salad every day with the raw food I'm actually going to do another experiment with that um, is actually go 100% raw and vegan for about a month's time that's something I plan on doing after I get back from my next trip I'm going to start doing that so the month of June will be raw and vegan for me it should be a very interesting time uh, the reason I'm doing this is not because I plan on going 100% raw or vegan for my lifetime but it's a way to experiment when you do something like this because you're not relying on the foods you already eat you're going to end up having to expand your boundaries of what you do so I'm going to be diving into all my raw food cookbooks so I'm making up new meals and not eating the same exact things all the time so I'm doing more than just eating salads or you know snacking on some nuts and seeds or making different shakes but really expanding what I'm doing with that so it should be a very interesting experiment along with that I'll see how I feel um, one great thing about raw food is it is more detoxing you're getting less toxins it's less of a stress on your body in some ways it really does depend on the food because even raw foods can be uh, more stressful than cooked foods in some way so but by doing this it may be a bit of a detox I'll see how it works with all my workouts but once again that's something I'll have to report to you later so Eat more raw food, something that most people can benefit from. Eat a salad daily, once again. I would say most people can would do well to do that. Uh, the next one on the list is a specific, I suppose we'll call it herb, that I want to experiment with. It's called hydrilla. Very interesting. It's actually a sea plant. Uh, if, if you are familiar with, a lot of times back in the day, with aquariums, they used to have just a... a plant that you would put into fish tanks the thing is that with this plant you can't kill it which is very interesting if you cut it up into small pieces for instance as long as it has water I suppose you can kill it if you take it out of the water uh, but basically if it's in water you can't kill it you cut it up into small pieces each one of those will grow it grows several inches a day back to its full size so what happened was some people ended up flushing this hydrilla that was commonly in fish tanks along with the dead goldfish down the toilet and then it would get in the rivers and streams and completely take over the water vegetation of the area clog up pipes and everything so it's actually illegal to have the living plant these days in the US not so sure about other countries but if you think about it if you have something that's this powerful that can regrow that fast that cannot be killed how powerful would that be if you took it as an ingestible material? How great could that be for you? So it's something I plan on experimenting with. They're talking a little bit about its uh, nutritional capabilities. Let me actually just flip back to where this is. I can mention it was really high in calcium. Uh, it, it, in the Chinese medicine, it would be known as a Jing substance, really working on the root, your physical essence. So very powerful that, really high in B vitamins, even having some of the B vitamins that, you know, mostly vegetarian sources don't have. So something very interesting. And if you haven't actually seen this already, and another announcement is the new business, supermanherbs.com, that I've started with my brothers. We have some very powerful herbs on there, just a couple so far. The pine pollen, tea pollen, the ant extract. We actually just ran out of the extract, but we're getting that back. We're getting some new stuff like Shilajit coming in. Very awesome stuff. I highly recommend you check it out. Once again, that's supermanherbs.com. 
But so with this hydrilla, uh, after experimenting with it, if it proves to be quite powerful and we really enjoy it, you know, equally if not more powerful than the other stuff we're offering then we will make it available on that site because uh, this is sort of a brand new thing not many people have even heard of this let alone are taking it at all um, and you may have noticed with the name of it hydrilla the root word being hydra basically is in there is how it got its name because you cut off a little bit of it and it regrows like the mythical hydra the dragon with its different heads so interesting herb going to be trying out and once again i'll report later to you on that here's another thing i'm trying to get back to doing something I've done in the past but had fallen off of and that is take Rishi daily if you're not familiar Rishi is known as the um, the immortal herb it is probably the highest rated if not the highest then definitely among the top in Chinese medicine Rishi is a certain type of mushroom and there are a great many different varieties of Rishi but just any of them is really good the Rishi is, uh, it's, it's hard to even explain how great it is, but top tonic herbalist will say Rishi changes lives. It has such an effect on a person that it really can redirect their life in a positive way. It's great for the immune system, but it also has, especially with the wild Rishis, because there's cultivated and there's wild, but with the wild Rishis it has the Shen effect. So with Chinese medicine, I mentioned the Jing before, there's Jing, Qi, and Shen. Jing is sort of the primal essence or the, the, the power of the physical body. Qi is sort of your everyday energy. And Shen is known as spirit. So it allows you to evolve spiritually when you take Rishi. And that's just some of the effects. It is, it's also by itself a great Qi tonic. Um, it really does have all three treasures, which is what Jing, Qi, and Shen are known as, the three treasures. But really this effect, this calming, sort of spiritual effect that it has. So if you've never even heard of this, and most people probably haven't, I would recommend you get some Rishi somewhere. Uh, we don't have it at Superman Herbs, but that will be something we definitely have in the future because it is powerful and it is something worth taking every single day. So that's something I'm going to be back and getting. Something else that I found very interesting was they're talking about vitamin D along with sunlight and saying that getting sun, especially in the morning time, not necessarily right when the sun rises, but before noon, uh, it was in some ways more powerful than just getting sun at any other time. Let me see if I can pull up the specific notes on this because I'm not remembering the exact details. Uh, they're, they're talking about how with sleep and sunlight, how sunlight actually helps regulate sleep, helps regulate the hormones. Uh, when you get morning sunlight, it boosts up your serotonin levels. Uh, when you need to go to sleep, you need high melatonin levels. Uh, by getting the sun early in the morning, because if you think back to our ancestors who did not have... Uh, electricity so they got up when the sun came up and they went to sleep when the sun went down sure they had candles but you could only use those so much but for the most part life really evolved and revolved around when the sun was up and people were outside of course working during that time so the sun goes up you're out there at the start of the day that helps to regulate the circadian rhythm and the cycle of our body so you get sun right at that time you're going to be better off and when I talk about get sun of course it's good great to get on your body you also want sunlight going directly into your eyes not obstructed glass for instance most windows block UVA is it UVA or UVB I'm not sure the exact one but it blocks one of them the good one and lets the other one the one that causes cancer it allows that through so you can still get sunburn for instance through glass but you're not getting quite the same beneficial aspects of the sun without that so you don't want to be looking for instance through contacts at the sun contacts can help disrupt your hormones like this and also can contribute to the eyes uh, eye problems in the future because you're not getting the sun into the eyes which can be beneficial for as well 
Uh, so that is something I plan on doing. I want to sort of expand my routine to actually, since I live near the beach, go to the beach every single morning, do a bit of my energy work there, practice on some skills like acrobatics, hand balancing, that sort of thing. Have a lot of fun and, of course, jump into the water because that's beneficial as well. So I'm going to be implementing that morning routine as well. And one of the parts of that is the morning sun, along with the grounding. Now, if you're not familiar with grounding, this is getting the physical connection with the earth has huge benefits. It is probably the best thing for chronic inflammation, merely touching the ground. So amazing for that. I've known about this for quite some time. Most people don't. It's still relatively new. Uh, so get out there, getting barefoot, doing workouts outside is something I'm a huge fan of. There's also technologies that allow you to take the benefits through the grounding wire in most outlets so you can be grounded while you sleep, for instance, without having to sleep outside. So moving on from that, could go at length an entire interview on grounding. Uh, if any of these things that I'm talking about here you would like me to go into more details on, let me know. I'll do an entire podcast in the future on the topic. But we got not much time left and a whole lot more to go through. So one of these was the magnesium foot bath. To do a foot bath that is loaded with magnesium from companies like Mineral Life, which you can get at, there's banners on my website, you can just go to minerallife.com, I believe that's a website. Uh, you can get the magnesium spray, which I've recommended for a long time, which you spray on your body, you absorb magnesium better through the skin than you do orally. So this is a great way to get it, and it's a mineral that most people are chronically deficient in. Specifically, one thing new here for me was the idea to do a magnesium foot bath. You could just take this spray and dump it in. They also specifically as like magnesium salts or magnesium flakes that you dump into a foot bath. And this can be a great way to not only absorb absorb the magnesium, but draw out toxicity through the feet. So this is something I'm going to be experimenting with. The next one has been something on my list of to-do for quite some time. Uh, now that it's on this specific list, I'm going to be a little more dedicated to actually getting started with it, it, which is to start growing some of my own food. I have space for a garden, I just haven't gotten around to it. Yet, I know, one, if you grow your own food, it's going to be a lot more nutritious than probably even stuff you find at the organic in the store or uh, at the local farmer's market. Uh, you know exactly what's going into it. It's very fun to have food that is that fresh. When you go outside and pick leaves off of some greens you're growing or a tomato, for instance, and make a salad with that, it's just going to be better than anything you can buy. So just growing some simple foods. Once again, I have the space. Get started doing it something I plan on doing. Uh, we were speaking about grounded before, so here's the deal. I try to spend time outside. I'm going to try to spend even more time in the future, but the truth is with my business, like for instance right now, I'm recording this podcast for you sitting at my computer, but I am grounded. I have a pad under my feet that is connected to that grounding wire. I have one in my bed, so I sleep grounded. That's probably the best way because you spend eight, give or take a couple hours per night on your mattress. So if you can ground it, you're going to get the benefits of this. And pe people have some dramatic benefits that come about of doing this. If you have inflammation, I would highly recommend you look more into this. Anyway, one of my steps on there was I realized, you know, uh, I don't watch TV, but a lot of times at night I like to watch a movie. It's a way for me to relax. And I haven't recently set up myself to actually be grounded in there. Uh, so one of the things with grounding that really became more clear to me during this conference was, one, the more surface area you can touch to the ground, the better off you'll be. Uh, for instance, David Wolf during one of his lectures was showing using a a voltmeter and also something that measured the hertz coming off of different the the power of electricity uh, electricity on some uh, a nearby light for instance and how when he was grounded that immediately went away or at least reduced down and he showed the more 
grounded he got by applying more of his body's surface area on the grounded mattress, for instance, which he was using there, the more it went down. So the more protection you're getting from the background noise or EMF pollution that is going on all around us. So not only do you want to expose more surface area when possible, you want to ground yourself just as much as possible. If you think back to our ancestors way, way back, they were always grounded. There was never a time when they weren't grounded, pretty much, because the only materials around were all conductive and they were always attached to the ground. They didn't have rubber-soled shoes that blocked them off. They didn't have high-rise buildings which blocked them off. All sorts of things. So get grounded get as much surface area ground as possible also spend as much time as possible so when I'm watching TV that's actually been something that I haven't spent or haven't been grounded during but I have the I have a few extra things so I can definitely add that on top of what I've been doing uh, this kind of goes along with something else and something I've been doing for the most part but not every single day which is to go outside daily S spend some time in nature every single day. So like I said, going to the beach, that would definitely take care of this for me. Uh, let's say I don't do that, but I have a nearby park. I can at least go outside, get a little sunlight, get some fresh air, and be grounded at the same time. You see, when you're outside in nature, you get multiple benefits all at once. Uh, so I do this for the most part, but there are some days when I tell myself I'm too busy and I don't even leave the house, except maybe to go get the mail. But to spend at least, I'd say, 15 minutes, really try to get more though, spend some time outside each day for the benefits we've already talked about. Now the next one is interesting, probably something you have never heard of before, geophagy. What this is, is eating clay. A very interesting area for discussion. The truth is, every single mammal in nature, and also I believe most birds, eat clay. All ancient human societies also used to eat clay. Guess what we, as modern humans, have removed from our diets? Clay. So adding this into your regular diet, not just something you do once in a while, but to ingest clay daily. Now what kinds of clay should you actually be ingesting? Obviously you don't want to go to you know, an arts and supply store and buy something that has colors in it and chemicals and everything. But there are certain clays that are made for consumption. For instance, one off the top of my head is bentonite clay. You can find this in most health food stores. Definitely you can find it online. Now the thing with clay is just eating it straight isn't very good um, at, because most of them will be powdered down. Usually it will be mixed into water, some sort of liquid, and then you can drink this. Still not going to taste that great. It is clay, but the, the benefits of doing this is clay is one of the most drawing and detoxing things in nature. With all the pollution we have going around in our food, even if you eat completely organic, there's still pollution on the food, just getting it from the air we breathe in. Clay draws these substances out of your body and then you'll end up excreting them. So it's actually recommended that you eat clay daily. If you take clay with your food, it's going to draw out some of the toxins that are in that food and so you'll end up better off. Uh, for instance, also the Fukushima disaster, there's radiation going on even far away places. I'm in California. Definitely have some here. Clay can help with this issue. So that's an interesting one. You can definitely try it out yourself. Uh, the next item on the to-do list is to go camping. Uh, once again, going with our nature theme that we've been going on with here. Uh, I have not been camping in many years, so that is something I'm going to try for sure to do this year. Just go to some nearby places, definitely lots of great places in California to go camping. That is something I'm going to be doing. Feast and famine. This is something I want to experiment with. Uh, once again, going back to more ancestral diet, uh, people didn't eat by the clock at all. One, they ate Really, I wouldn't even say they ate with, hang with hunger, but they ate when they had food available. Sometimes there's plenty of food available, the feasting aspect of it. So they ate a lot more. Other times, food was scarce. So they weren't able to get it, and they might go with 
out food for much of one day might have to go without food for a couple days so this is the whole idea of intermittent fasting and really you know cycling through these different things sometimes eating more sometimes eating less and I think honestly that this is actually a healthier way to eat because when you're eating all the time you never give your digestion a break even just sleeping that's not long enough of a break that your body really needs to deal with all the other problems that it has but since digestion is the most energy intensive process of the body when you stop eating for a, a while like a 24 hour fast for instance then your body can then use that energy wherever else it needs it to work with the immune system to clear up pathogens uh, to work on inflammation issues different all sorts of different things this can really help out so this is something I plan on experimenting with more in the future uh, speaking of digestion another experiment I plan on doing is taking digestive enzymes as well as hydrochloric acid uh, now my digestion is pretty good uh, at times though I definitely overeat and abuse it trying to limit that but even with good food uh, for instance uh, Dr. Robert Marshall was talking about this um, the fact that when you cook your food it doesn't have enzymes in it I mean there's no doubt to that and over time this you you have a supply of enzymes in your body uh, so these are then used up to help with the digestion of food uh, however if over the years of eating cooked food even if you do still eat a lot of raw food along with it you're not going to have you're, you're going to deplete your body's supplies of enzymes so taking enzymes especially with cooked food uh, taking enzymes along with foods that you may not digest well for instance taking lactase when you do have dairy products if you're not producing that enzyme on your own which probably most people are not then this is going to help you help your body actually be able to break down and use that food uh, hydrochloric acid your body needs to have the right acids in the stomach in order to digest the food once again so this is something I plan on experimenting with uh, most people here's an interesting thing the whole idea of taking antacids this is horrible for your body because you are producing acid in your stomach in order to digest the food when you put antacids a heavily alkaline substance in there it kills that off and basically the food will not digest it just passed through your digestive tract completely undigested and rotting so it just goes through and it's not being used so you really want to avoid taking antacids period um, what you need to do is then you know work with possibly hydrochloric acid or digestive enzymes to assist with this and to tone your diet back so you don't need those so it doesn't burn so much cause the heart heartburn and uh, acid in digestion that sort of thing so I would definitely avoid those if you have been taken on of course I'm not a doctor don't listen to me about anything because I don't know what I'm talking about I don't know are antacids even prescribed by doctors they probably mention them uh, but anyway moving on uh, one thing I've been doing, once again, this is outside of what most people do, is collecting fresh spring water. You can go to a great website, findaspring.com. This was created by Daniel Vitalis, who's one of the speakers at the Longevity Conference. Very interesting guy, has a lot of great information. Anyway, with this website, you can find springs that are around you that you can then go and collect your own free water and it's also tends to be the best quality water you possibly can find so when you're collecting water from a spring it has the seeds of life in it basically it has stuff so that downstream things can take that water and start growing with it so what happens if you store water you get from a spring algae will start to grow in the bottles and with one aspect of this I was wondering what would be a good way to clean those bottles just need to get a bottle brush specific brushes made to clean them but how do you actually avoid that and I talked to Daniel specifically about this and he mentioned that photosynthesis is what causes the algae to grow so if you want to avoid algae growing in the bottles just keep them away from light completely because without light 
stuff won't begin to grow. That being said, the algae actually that forms in them up to probably a certain point, it's completely harmless. It's not going to actually be bad for you at all. And in some ways it could possibly be good because having some of these algaes in there, I mean, we eat algaes, people that are into superfoods, you got blue green algae, you got spirulina, you got chlorella. So this may not be as beneficial as those, but there's probably some benefits even to doing it. So it's just very interesting to learn to store water without light. Uh, the next items on here are to eat more mushrooms, uh, to eat raw onions, to eat some more wild foods. Let me just tell you some of the things about mushrooms. We mentioned before the reishi, which is a medicinal mushroom, one of many medicinal mushrooms out there. Very good stuff, but even your more common mushrooms have some very interesting benefits and this can be gotten from not a lot of mushrooms you don't need to eat a pound a day he was saying with like 10 grams of mushrooms which is almost nothing you get some benefits and this specific information come, came from dr joel Furman, pretty famous author he was saying mushrooms uh, have antigen binding lectins these bind to abnormal cells so your immune system can come in and clean them up so they aid in your immune system they're angiogenesis inhibitors. This prevents abnormal cells from the blood they need to grow. So the the C word is uh, something that would classify as an abnormal cell. So if you prevent the blood flow to these, it's not going to grow. Very interesting. They're also aromatase inhibitors. Aromatization is the process in which the sex hormones, testosterone, converts over into estrogen. Uh, this happens in older men. Uh, this is also something that needs to be watched by people that take steroids, for instance, because this leads to just over estrogen. So these mushrooms have things that help to stop this process from happening so that all the good hormones don't end up turning into bad hormones in your body. So just trying to daily eat a little bit of mushrooms could be quite good for you. Uh, I mentioned the onions, they have um, some properties that are very good for you and specifically it's the raw onions you want to eat. Uh, one of which was they have FOS which is fructooglyosaccharides. Uh, this is a prebiotic. Most people have heard of probiotics, you know, that's the beneficial bacteria. Prebiotics are actually the food on which these good bacteria thrive. So inulin is one, this FOS is another, and that's actually found in onions. Specifically, he recommended eating raw onions, just slicing a few up and putting them on your salads, which I love to do and something I'm planning on doing regularly. So we've already gone over a half an hour. I think I might need to do part two of this program because I have to run. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention before we wrap up today and I get this podcast out to you. I just announced I am holding a one-day bodyweight workshop. It's known the Ninja Bodyweight Workshop in Los Angeles, California. A uh, very sweet deal on this. You get some amazing bonuses for signing up. Uh, Right now, it's only $147 for the first few people that sign up, so make sure you go and check that out right now. That is at advancedbodyweighttraining.com slash ninja. Once again, that's advancedbodyweighttraining.com slash ninja, N-I-N-J-A. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. You're going to learn some really cool stuff there, so be sure to check that out. Once again, this is Logan Christopher from LegendaryStrength.com, signing off.